Guess what? We went two and one on the show yesterday, as is pretty much always the case. 42 and 21 run on the morning wager from Mark Zinno and I. And yes, Mark, I was responsible for the one loser for the second yeah, day in a row. I, I don't like, like that. You, I need to be better. You are you are the one. You are the one. As in the one who keeps getting it wrong, making us going two and one. So I'd like you to not be the one today. Okay. At least change it up. Be Let better. me be the one for once. No, I, no one's going to be the one. On the Guardians. Stop betting on the Guardians. It works doesn't work out well for you. I have not technically bet on the Guardians in this series. By the way, we will be revealing our gentlemen's bet. Yes, we, we, we'll be reve- <laughs> we'll be revealing our gentlemen's bet in just a little bit here for the series, which I am going to have to own up to because the Guardians have no chance to win the LCS. It's over. Yes. The New York Yankees have advanced to the 2024 World Series. Okay. But Brian Barr Let's actually talk- texted me that in the first inning of game one. <laughs> the New York Yankees have advanced to the World Series. <laughs> Let's talk about who the Yankees will be playing in the World Series this year because we have game three of the NLCS, a rubber match. If you will, this series tied up at 1-1. I had the Mets in game two. Uh, For game three, Mark, you're going to look at the total. I'm going to look at the side. But so you go first. Yeah, um, look, how do I not take a seven and a half over when Walker Bueller is on the mound and Luis Severino? Like, uh, look, I've been kind of hard on Luis Severino, right? Just because, you know, I, I hate him as a, you know, uh, as as a Yankee fan, and his numbers at home have been very good. He's got two two nine six mm-hmm. ERA. Um, look, it, it, I mean, you know, the problem is, is he's not. A, he pitches to a lot of contact, right? He's not a high strikeout guy, uh, and this is a lineup that you don't want to pitch contact to. Period. Like you, you don't want to keep putting the ball in the middle of the plate. He didn't face the Dodgers this year, and normally I'd give that that advantage to the pitcher, but it's Luis Severino. So we know Walker Bueller has been infinitely bad. We saw what the Padres did to him in one inning, his last start. I, I just I know the Dodgers bullpen is really good, um, but we're not going to continue to get this high level pitch. I mean, the way they, the, the first two games went, you know, uh, after the Dodgers had their third straight shutout and the Mets came back and scored a bunch of runs, like there's too many good bats in both these lineups here for me not to take it over. I, I would love to have found a way to just play against Walker Bueller in the first five, but the prices were so incredibly juiced that we couldn't. This is going to be a client play for me over seven and a half. Dodgers, Mets, uh, I, I think we get enough here from both these lineups here to go go over that number. I am going to find a way to play against Walker Bueller, and I'm going to take the Mets' first five money line. We get the tie in our back pocket. Mar- it's only minus 115 to take the Mets here to have the lead after five. You mentioned it with Bueller, Mark. Uh, he gave up six runs and seven hits. All six runs came in one inning, did they not, uh, in that mm-hmm. with, with his five-inning stint against the Padres? And it's and you also talked about this too. It's been a massive struggle for him, really on the road. Six point five three ERA on the road for Bueller. One point seven one WHIP. He allows nearly two home runs per nine innings. And the long ball was certainly the weapon of choice for the Mets in Game Two. And Severino, you said it um, about his home road splits: two point nine six at home, five flat on the road. This game's at home. So I think it's a pretty clear starting pitching edge for the Mets here. Something I said coming into this series, and it's why I got so nervous uh, down the stretch in game two when I had the Mets. I feel the Mets used up all their positive bullpen variants, all their positive late inning variants in that Phillies series. So to me, if they're to win game three tonight, it's going to be because they jump all over Bueller early and then hold on. So give me the Mets in the first five money line to go along with your over. I think we're both on the same page here. It's all about fading the struggling Walker Bueller. So uh, let us know down in the comment section how you are betting game three of the NLCS. Uh, or you can just give us a thumbs down and say you don't like us, apparently. I thought that was unfounded. I didn't think we've done any go. reason. Or you can there give us go. a thumbs up. That's, hey, that's much oh, by better. by the way. Oh, by the way, we do need to give a thumbs up to our buddy, Ken. Uh, If you guys read our comments here on the Morning Wager, um, Ken bought Brian Powers $5 play yesterday. Thanks to all who purchased a $5 play. Yes. Um, But when Ken had gotten into the comments and said, hey, I bought Brian Powers $5 play, I literally turned back and I go, wait, 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 you buy his and you don't buy mine? Like, what what is this? And then Ken went out and said he got intimidated and bought my $5 play. So, Ken, I want to thank you. 
Uh, if it does not cash, I will send you $5 back because I didn't want to scare you into buying it, okay? It wasn't a threat. I wasn't going to come to your house and and and, and hurt you for not buying my $5 play. But I appreciate it. My kids appreciate it. And uh, so does the mortgage company. <laughs> I can actually give Ken the money in person. I met Ken yeah. at the Guardians right. game. So I, I don't That's know. Right. He, he was well, one of our top, top viewers here on the morning wager. He came up and, uh, at Progressive Field. So thank you yeah, for I, that support. Thank you to everyone. Anybody. I'm not here to threaten no. or intimidate anybody other than Brian Power. That's it. Well, yeah, there we go. Okay. Well, thank you to everyone for taking advantage of $5 Tuesday at wagertalk.com. Again, every Tuesday you can get $5 best bets from uh, not just Mark and I, but all of your favorite cappers at the site. Um, our, our gentleman's agreement, we have come to an agreement here for the ALCS that, and make no mistake about it, guys, I'm going to be the one paying up because the Guardians aren't winning the series. So... <laughs> You can look forward <laughs> after the ALCS is over. I am going to be forced every time I speak. And maybe I will have to uh, hit the bottle of tequila before I do it. No, no. Everyone in, in, in power here at Wager Talk, I'm not going to do that. But in all seriousness, every time I speak on the show in November, I have well, to no, we'll a few. One week is enough. It's going to get annoying. One week. You're going to start. It will. Me. We'll it it will. Okay. The, the loser week. of the bet will have to, quote, heap effusive praise on the other person before speaking. Yes. So what we so, may do is just come up with a simple phrase as Brian Power would say, Mark Zeno, you're just the smartest man I've ever met in my life. Every time before you speak. That, that's accurate, but, you know, it's fair. They're running the bases like drunks. No, I like won't drugs. I, I be able to say that much. Johnson. Yes, it yeah, was. Thank you, John Stone, for that right. GM of the call last night. It was, and they still won, even though they run the bases like drunks. That should tell you about the Guardians, who uh, play in the field like drunks. All right, uh, show best bet time. Let's talk a little college football, shall we, Mark? Uh, there are two games in Conference USA. Conference USA, uh, you know, I guess it's good for them that they've got the weekday games to themselves because no one would be betting these otherwise. Western Kentucky and Sam Houston. Hashtag eat them up, cats. That's Bearcats with a K, Zeno, for yes. Sam Houston. Uh, we like them as short home favorites here. This is a team that can run the ball very effectively. Yes. Guys, if you don't know, yes. Sam Houston is 11th in the country in rushing offense. So uh, we're going to lay the short number with the home team here. We are. Uh, you talk about their run game. Uh, and just so you get an idea of their splits, the Bearcats, with a K, uh, have 286 rushes on the year compared to just 150 pass attempts. When you can run the ball with that level of efficiency, and you can control the game on the ground and control the clock, then guess what? Uh, I'm always going to be in favor of doing this. We get a short number here to back Sam Houston State, uh, and, and I think this is the right side here. Look, the only way the Hilltoppers win this game is to try to stop the run outright or be able to pass the ball so effectively that they uh, they can control the game and force Sam Houston to play catch-up because running teams can't play catch-up. So if Western Kentucky builds a 14, 17-point lead, we may be dead in the water at that point in time. But that's one of those things that happens fairly early in the game, not late. Um, because Sam Houston plays so slow and runs the ball, they'll control the pace of the game here. So um, I, I like the Bearcats here to cover this number. Oh, by the way, BP, um, to all the people in the comment section yesterday who told us Louisiana Tech, oh, God, New Mexico State with a bad pick. Ha! Ah, ah, ha! Ah. Ha! We were right. You were wrong. I got, ah. But, hey, and I had the trend. I, I wowed that. That was what pushed us over the finish line, I think, uh, yes. to make that a show best bet. When you're like, why is Louisiana Tech laying all these points on the road? I said, Mark, this is before we went on the air. I said, Mark Zeno, I've got a trend for you. Louisiana Tech is not just 0-7 ATS its last seven games as a road favorite. They're 0-7 straight up in those games. Yeah. And guess what, gang? You can make that 0-8 straight up and it gets the spread because they lost outright as a double-digit road favorite. What a best bet that was on the New Mexico State Aggies, the team from Las Cruces. Las but Cruces. We are taking Sam, we're taking Sam Houston. That's the state over you there in Texas. You should learn that we are better than you at this. And when okay, we give you a so play. Oh, sorry. Let's not get okay. too cocky. Yeah. Let's not get, Let's get, cocky. get out, get out of our skis here. <laughs> yes, no. Um, by the way, I'll, I'll add one little more tidbit here for Sam Houston. This is a team, as you know, Mark, second year as an FBS program, okay? A win tonight, they get bowl eligible. They're in, in, at home in front of a national television audience. I mean, how many times is Sam Houston going to be on ESPN2? I guess maybe one or two others because Conference USA has this midweek slate. But still, I think it's a big deal. I think they show up and show out, and uh, they get the W. Uh, they'll win by more than a field goal. All right. Um, 
Is there anything else we would like to talk about here? Is are there? I, I can I promote myself, or, or we should I no, not do that? No, or, nobody wants, nobody oh, wants no. to hear. We, we know we know how good your college record is. Okay, I'll do it. We have a very good college record. You have a very good NFL record. You might be number one overall in football. That's enough. Let's move on. Uh, speaking of college football, uh, you and I again. You know, as we head into this weekend, what? What, no. what are you looking at? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Don't thank worry you. about it. I know. Um, as we head into this weekend. Big college card, guys. Big, big college card. Yes. Um, there are a couple of games. I think we told you to talk to you guys earlier. The whole slate looks really good. Um, I, there, there are games out. I tell you right now, Georgia Tech probably going to make the card as that number keeps going north, which is crazy because Brent Key as a home dog uh, has been fantastic against the spread since he's been at Georgia Tech. But a lot of other big games. Obviously, we get Georgia, Texas, uh, Alabama, Tennessee, everything else. Like It's, it's really good. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of home dogs I'm looking at. We talked about the home dog last night, Cash in New Mexico State. Uh, on the Power Five yesterday, I gave out Maryland, plus seven against USC. The commenters hated that selection. Hated yes. it. The vitriol no I got. I mean, Go ahead, sorry. USC, hasn't won, USC has not won east of the Mississippi since 2012, and they're laying seven. And a half. Yes. I mean, it, you're getting more. You need a two score win. Come on. I mean, you know, uh, when we run down the the, the 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 spreads each week on Monday, you know, we all kind of write our own lists out, and then we just compare notes at some point on Monday. You and I both had Maryland it circled. Like, the, how did you know what, what is US USC was favored by four and a half at Penn State and lost. They were favored by nine and a half at Minnesota and lost. And now they're favored by seven and a half coming all the way to the East Coast. Stop. Stop it. USC may win the game. They're not covering. But a couple other ones too, or one other one I'll give you. Another live home dog, Oregon State getting seven at home against UNLV. Look, I was the one who said when Sluka pieced out with the NIL debacle, I said Haj Malik Williams is going to be an improvement over him. And I took UNLV, as you remember, against Fresno State. They annihilated him. UNLV has been putting a lot of points on the board, but they give up a lot of points too, Mark. And check this out Oregon State since 2021 has only lost three times in Corvallis. All three losses were to teams ranked in the top 10 in the country at that time. UNLV is good. They're not a top 10 team in the country. Come on, man. And one final note, it's a, it's a hold your nose and look away game, but there's no world where Vanderbilt should be laying four touchdowns to anybody. Take Ball State. There's no way you're laying four touchdowns at Vanderbilt. You're just not, period. Don't watch the game. Ball. Don't look at it. Yeah. Pretend it doesn't exist, but you're not laying 26 and a half at Vanderbilt, period. So that'll do it I for mean, me. I'm I mean, that's a that's a Marco D'Angelo sandwich spot potentially for bet on it, yeah. right? Because I mean, Vander they're they're coming off two double digit uh, wit two outright wins as double digit dogs over Bama and Kentucky. And who does Vandy play next week, Mark? Ooh. Texas. Yes, huh. Texas. All right. So that'll do it, I guess, for the show. Like, comment, and subscribe, please, everybody. We always appreciate the support. Click that bell for instant alerts. I know it was coming.